Hello, my friends, and welcome, welcome back to another session with the older man. Yes, my friend, it is a Saturday here in Dubai, and we're going to examine that old question. Where are all the good men gone? Women are asking. And the thing is, right, this has been a question that has been asked for the past 12 years because we're going to go back and examine another video with Karen Strong. She's my newfound female hope <laughs> in this male space, the advocate for men, men and their mental health, men and relationships, for men to wake up and realize that they are powerful, they are the backbone of the societies that we're now living in. And hopefully to convince women, you better get on board if you would love to have success with a man. And so in this video, we're going to break down with Karen and a couple other modern videos and examine how women were asking the same question 12 years ago and how it's gotten pretty bad today. So my friends, subscribe if you haven't already. And of course, book a session with your favorite uncle, mentor, father figure that you didn't have. <laughs> Go over to askanolderman.com for that. All right. And join our membership system so that you can get on board and have deep conversations. And of course, also network with all the people that are like-minded who follow my content. So let's get into Karen as she let's once again visit Karen. I think she's in her kitchen. Guess it's good light. <laughs> And uh, she's having a talk with herself, but so enlightening, guys, so enlightening. You got to stay to the end, man. She's she's so sharp. Uh, an online friend of mine was uh, really freaking pissed off after reading a recent effort on the part of, I can only assume, is a traditionalist woman in uh, trying to figure out what the heck is wrong with men these days. I'm, I'm going to leave the article in the information section along with... Uh, some other stuff, but uh, basically, just like many traditionalists and feminists before her, she, she really missed the mark by a freaking mile. Um, even though she really, she kind of danced a little closer, like within a hundred miles or so of the, the few core issues that currently discourage men from being the good little married drones they're supposed to be. Despite being critical of feminist attitudes that she rightly sees as anti-male, the article was still absurdly gynocentric. It was very much about what women want and uh, why they're not getting it. And, uh, like, that is getting married, having babies on women's schedules as decided by women. Um, I almost have to wonder whether this author even bothered to ask any actual unmarried males why they're refusing or not bothering to uh, man up before writing her article. But, as I said, it at least poked at the surface of the festering boil that is the systemic nature of the problem, even if it didn't give it the lancing it truly deserved. I saw this woman the other day on a, the Whatever podcast. I just, just, just listen to this. A poor man. Why don't you want a poor man? Because you want him to, quote, provide for you, correct? Because I've been taking care of everything my whole life, the financial burden of... The financial yeah. burden. Yeah. You want him to take off yep. the financial burden, right? Yes. So if you want him to take off the financial burden, how much do you want? At least half, right? Yes. What do you think compensates him for eliminating 50% of the financial burden that you have that he's not responsible for? It's not that I'm trying to give him half of my financial burden, but... Literally, you are trying to give him half of your financial burden. What are you talking about? How are you not? I'm looking for a partner, and I'm looking for somebody that has the same goals and that wants the same thing, too. They want their best friend. How are you not trying to give this man 50% of your financial burden he's not actually responsible for currently, but in the future he will be based on your choices? But right? that, isn't are. that what marriage... Doesn't that just irks you, just blows your mind that her consideration for a man con is, there's nothing blank. There's freaking blinders on and all she sees is that man taking 50% of her financial burden. That's it. Nothing else. He'll get a friend. <laughs> oh, oh gosh. That one made me choke just trying to say it. She, he'll get a friend. Isn't that what marriage is? Men to take her burden away from her. Wow. 
that's where we are. That is where we are today, my friends. Woo! Man, this burns me, I, I tell you. All right, you know what? I'm going to go hard on you guys today. I'm going to show you what men have to deal with in today's modern environment. What choices a lot of men have today. Now, this is an extreme case, but I'm going to show you what men have to deal with. Let's take a look at this video that came across my feed this morning. Woman goes viral letting 101 men run a train on her in one day. One day. Morning, so today is the day where I get run through by a hundred guys. How many condoms I have, for fuck's sake. I think this is all I'm gonna do with my hair and makeup today. Just a bit of bronzer and a bit of blush. I'm running a little bit late, I think. I'll be totally fine, because the boys can't start without me. Oh, not looking too bad. I'm almost there now. I'll be off to a little bit of a late start, but that's fine. I've got time to make it back up. Hello. How are you doing? How is it <laughs> How's it going so far? Good. How many are we on? It's a lot of fun. Now I'm on. Eight guys. Only eight, not You enjoying not yourself? Yeah, I am actually. First group scene done. Currently 7 p.m. About, I'd say, I think about 70 people through. This is what the room is looking like. Not in the best state. Um, we've kind of got things everywhere. <sighs> Someone brought me a rose. Oh my God, I forgot to vlog this. Someone bought me a fucking rose. He was the sweetest boy ever. Apologies that this vlog ends very abruptly here, but after being run through by 101 guys, for 14 hours straight, I just conked out after I finished. Ran through by 101 men, and my eyes are still recovering from all the bodily fluids that went in them. I, I can't listen to anymore. Now, here's the thing. A woman can get 100 guys to run through her in one day, 24 hours, 14 hours to be precise. So when I tell women that boasting about the amount of men who you've had sex with, like you're a man, how pointless that is and how useless it is. I always tell women this. She, she thinks that her value is based on how many men she can get to sleep with her. This woman also said in this video that she had booked 200 men who wanted to do it. But she knew on the day that some guys probably wouldn't show up and she wanted to ensure that she got 100 men. She ended up with 101. But the fact that there were 101 men who are willing to do this with her blows my mind. Men, we have to have a lot more freaking respect for ourselves than this, man. We do. Our standards for sex is so freaking low. There's too many thirsty men out there. Wow. So, ladies, you got to realize that there is no value to sex anymore. This is what I'm trying to get across to you. There is no value to sex. So when you say that, oh, you know, I can get it anytime I want. Yeah, we know you can get it anytime you want. That is not a flex. That is not a flex at all. Nothing that is easy to, to acquire should be glorified about or to be is to be proud about. If you can go out on the beach and pick up sand, the reason why sand has no value because it's easy to get. Big diamonds, that's a different story. That's why things have value. The less they are available, the more valuable they become. When you make yourself available to a lot of men, you become less valuable. It's not freaking rocket science. Anyway, let's get back to Karen. But I just had to break this up so that you guys can see that these are the type of women that we now have to pick from. No, I'm not saying every woman is being ran through by a hundred men. What I'm saying is there's a lot of women that are being ran through by five men, which is also too many before you get married. I make sure I tell my daughters, if you want to be valuable to a man, you got to preserve yourself. You got to discipline yourself. Just like a man has to discipline himself in his early days to work hard and make enough money to be desired by a woman. She has to discipline herself and preserve herself so that she could be desired by a good man when she gets at age. That's all I'm saying. So we got the problem with the sexual part. Then we have the obesity problem, right? And trigger warning, gentlemen, morbidly obese woman coming up. You told me to warn you whenever I play these videos, okay? 
So I'm just warning you right now. I'm not doing this to be mean. I'm just doing this to show you an example of what men have to choose from. This is the Yeezy's dress into a skirt, short dress, and a long dress. It's doing its thing, you know, keeping that junk in that trunk and snatching that waist. Look at that waist. You can make it as a and of course we all gotta just look at this and we can't say anything about it. I don't want to get tagged for hating obese women. I do I, that's not my point. I'm trying to show you an example, gentlemen. These are the standards that we are told we have to accept. Now Karen's gonna go a little deeper into this problem that we're having because she recognized the problem from twelve years ago. Men have been telling her this. And these are the women that will tell you, no, I don't want a fat man. I want a man with muscles, six foot tall. These are the same women that will tell you that. Make that shit make sense. All right, let's get back to Karen. Her conclusion seemed to come down to why buy the cow when you can get the milk for free? Uh, and why get a good job when women are independent and can just give milk away for nothing? Um... Both are backhanded criticisms of women's behavior, which is kind of nice, somebody brave enough to blame women for their own troubles, but, but they really fall far short of any real examination of the underlying issues. So, I'm going to give it the old college try and uh, give a bit of an overview of what I believe has become a multifaceted problem. Now, I'm going to read a recent, uh, part of a recent article from Hartiste. Uh, who said a very great deal with some serious literary flair. Uh, it's kind of pearls of wisdom from the pit of social nihilism that is the pickup artist community. And, uh, and he actually was spot on about some things, yet, again, overly simplistic about others. I'm just going to quote some of the relevant, relevant bits and leave a link to the article below. He says... If you want to know why men are running away from marriage, children, and beta provisioning, one major reason is that the women available to these working-class men are flat-out disgusting. What man of normal mental health and active libido wants to romantically woo and date, let alone marry, a beastly, waddling, tatted mountain of pustulence with the issue of three other men barking and nipping at her cankles? And let's not forget that economically empowered and government-assisted women slaves to their hypergamous instincts for a higher status mate than themselves, cannot help but winnow the pool of men deemed acceptable marriage material. When women say, there are no good men left, what the astute observer hears is, there are no good men left thanks to a combination of my increased expectations and decreased attractiveness. Oh, man. You see why I, I just adore this woman? <laughs> this is insane. This is insane. This is 12 years ago, man. This shit has been going on and it's, it's just getting worse. Wow. Wow. He goes on to say, To the factory farm tower, ivory tower sociologists studying marriage trends and turning out paper after paper of half-assed hogwash, there's a whole other world out there. It's the world of men. And in that world, men's desires matter. You should think about incorporating that ugly reality into your theories. And this is the biggest problem. When these researchers write these papers on all the social ills that are occurring, men's consideration aren't taking into account at all. It's all about, well, what is it that the women are missing? What are they not getting? No one takes men's desires or what men think into consideration. You see it all the time on these talk shows. Oh, why are we not getting married anymore? Is a panel of four women on there talking about the woman, and then the women are just bashing the woman. Well, there's not any good men out there anymore. Make that shit make sense. As blistering as that little snippet was, it raises some very important points, and I think the most important one is that men's desires matter. When men can't find women they desire who are willing to partner with them, then why would they partner? And, uh, and it really can't be stressed enough 
uh, that the reality of divorce and family law in our culture plays a huge part in men's growing contempt for marriage as an institution. It's not that men are commitment phobes, it's that women seem increasingly commitment incompatible. The word commitment has in fact in female parlance come to mean up until the moment I'm no longer 100% satisfied with the person I married. And that attitude's only going to lead to more and more divorces as more and more successful women effectively set their sights higher than they reasonably should while their youth and attractiveness wanes, leading to a growing number of them feeling like they settled even if they didn't, even if they scored someone two points above them on the overall attractiveness scale. One symptom of this, I think, uh, that's very telling is OkCupid's recent revelation that women on their site deemed 80% of men less than average attractiveness. That is, 80% of men were below average. This does not compute. This in no way is in line with reality. Because society have told them that if they have on makeup and if they have on weaves and lashes and a BBL and fake titties and liposuction that she is now a 10. And we cannot view women in any other light besides a 10. Every woman is perfect. So we have a delusional set of females in our society that continues to look at any man who is not capable of having an extreme amount of money to compensate for the looks that she does not see on par with her because she gets to live the delusion. I mean, I, I was walking across a bus stop going to my car yesterday, coming from the gym, and I saw one woman, just one woman at the bus stop, just in the corner, just standing there with her phone, just, just going click, 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 just taking tons of photos. This is a work day. This It's a freaking Friday morning. Friday morning, she's going to work. But because she feels that, oh, I look good today, I need to take a bunch of photos and upload them so that other people could see how gorgeous I am. So that I could get that validation, that dopamine hit early in the morning because, hey, I'm sitting here at the bus stop waiting on the bus. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, man. And of course, she's going to want that high value, man. <laughs> oh, you can't make this shit up, man. This is about women's expectations. And oddly enough, no one, least of all women, seem to really give a shit what men want in a partner. Why can't men just be happy with what's available? Well, when you look at what's available to the average man in his 30s or early 40s, a 35-year-old woman who hollers yes over the jangling of her biological clock while unable to keep the grimace from her face because he's a bigger loser than the five guys she dumped in her 20s, and now she's having to settle. Did, did you say five, Karen? Five? Most women will do that in a month. Stop it. Stop. Maybe 12 years ago, but not today, my friend. Or a divorcee who's already financially annihilated and emotionally crippled at least one other man. Or, uh... A single mother who's collecting reams of child support from one poor schmuck while her other baby daddy manages to duck his obligations because he's a drug dealer and his income's off the books. And yeah, I'm exaggerating, but you see my point. And no, not all women are like that. Lord knows, I know not all women are like that. But frankly, the consensus among today's women seems to be that this state of affairs is just the new normal. Uh, even responsible women will often frame such destructive choices on the part of other women as somehow valid and defensible. The sentiment in the mainstream is that men should just man up and go along with pairing up 2.0, who cares what men want, and that essentially a woman's behavior and life choices should have no effect on whether she's able to attract a good, reliable man. All of that really doesn't speak well of the principles of even those women who are more well situated. In fact, I think it's safe to say that the fewer female voices of reason there are out there, the more men are likely to wash their hands of the entire idea of partnering. And that's why I tell you ladies, especially the ones that are hurting and suffering the most, you all need to be 
the opposite voice of reasoning that pushed back on a lot of these women who are pushing this narrative that they're the best and they're this and they're woman power, blah, 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 and making men feel like they were irrelevant until those men walk away and stop giving them any commitment because all of you are suffering. And it seems like the loudest voices are the ones that are being heard pushing this crap. There is not enough women pushing back in telling other women to stop it because you're hurting all of those women that want to have a man to support them and to help them build a life together. Because this economy, you cannot survive on your own. Listen, ladies, when I say survive on your own, you might be able to pay your bills one paycheck away from destruction, but that is not sustainable for the long run. Take it from an older person. If you're not putting away something every single month, that goes into an investment account that's going to help to sustain you in your old age, you're screwed. And I can tell you, daddy government isn't going to have enough money because there's not enough people having babies to pay into the social security pot. So old people are going to suffer and you're going to be in that pot. There's not going to be a lot of social programs available. You're going to start to see a lot of women out on the street living in their cars. We've already seen it, actually. Just so you know, I'm going to do an upcoming video on women living in their cars. But I honestly think it goes even deeper than just the baggage the average unattached woman now carries or the danger of ending up an emotionally and financially devastated statistic with generous every other weekend access to one's children that's keeping men from manning up. I kind of started thinking a little bit more about this when I uh, watched Typhon Blue's uh, extremely thought-provoking video uh, on what she calls the apexual male, a man who, uh, who does not identify with other men, uh, but merely identifies with his place in the status hierarchy. I, I highly recommend anybody to go watching go watch that and, and I'm going to leave the link in the information section as well. Her video got me thinking about the White Feather Girls. For those of you who don't know, this was a group of young women in the UK during World War I who went around bestowing white feathers of cowardice on any man they saw in civilian clothes to shame them into enlisting. Now. When I consider how vulnerable so many men were to those kinds of shaming tactics, vulnerable enough to enlist in a war that killed 10 million uh, to preserve their manhood in the eyes of bitchy women they'd never even met, I just can't believe that it's only the risks of marriage, as onerous as they are, that have rendered men impervious to the kinds of shaming tactics employed by traditionalists and feminists who seem increasingly desperate to strong-arm men back into their old roles. So I think beyond any discussion of the risks of marriage, unfairness in family court, all of that, I think way down at the, at the core of things, uh, maybe it's about uh, a positive male identity. Yes. You know, women will do anything to try to shame men to get back into their traditional roles, even though they don't want to be traditional women. The point for you gentlemen to understand, if you fall prey to a woman's shame of not doing something for them, you're an idiot. Gentlemen, you have to learn to say to women, when they try to shame you, what, you broke? Just say, yeah, I'm broke. I'm broke. I'm frugal. I make sure that I watch my money because women like you will suck it from me. So yeah, I am broke to you. Me, I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> Just say, listen, on my own, I'm fine. What about you? Can you take care of yourself? If you can take care of yourself and I can take care of myself, we're good. But don't call me broke because I don't want to spend my money on you. Just lay it out to them very clearly, man. Any woman who come with that crap, guys, you got to freaking put your finger down and say, listen, I'm broke. I'm broke. I watch my money because in this economy, I ain't spending stupid money on some woman who just want to take me for my money. Are you one of those women? Well, if you can't pay for me, I, I, it's okay, good. So I'm not broke. Obviously, you're broke because you can't pay for yourself. Oh, I can pay for myself. Well, there, there we go then. We're good. You pay for yourself. I pay for myself. We're good. How's that sound? Well, I don't want a man who can't pay for me. Okay, thank you. Goodbye. Done. Finish. Move on to the next one, gentlemen. That's how you have to look at these women in today's modern society. Don't let women shame you into doing anything you don't want to do. You've got to grow a pair of balls, my friend. 
Now, male identity almost always re revolves around doing rather than being. Uh, most of that doing has revolved around being of use in a uniquely male context. Most of men's usefulness through history has derived from learning male skills and performing them well, embodying a male role in the service of women and society. In the more turbulent past, those roles uh, needed to perform a valuable service to women or the community that women couldn't or shouldn't be expected to perform for themselves. Now, this is the most common path, in my opinion, to a positive male identity because men lack a mechanism for automatic own group preference. Simply put, they just don't relate to other men automatically just because they're men. Women have this bias, which provides them a natural ability to form cooperatives and relate to other women and seek consensus through their strong mechanism for own group preference based on gender alone. Um, given the gender roles through most of human history, this mechanism really makes sense. Uh, their individual value as, to put it bluntly, breeders meant that in a survivalist environment, you didn't throw a woman on the trash pile without a pr pressing reason. Adjustments were made when they could be to keep as many women as possible within the sisterhood. That was a bit confusing what she said, but try to understand. She's saying that women are naturally more cliquish. They get together and they try to, and they always have a sort of a support network because they're the most vulnerable sex. They need each other more than men. Men t tend to be a lot more like lone wolves. We have our own identities, you see. We understand hierarchy if we are in a group, but we tend not to naturally do that because we can survive on our own individually. Most women can't. That's why these movements also are more powerful when, when women do it because they can organize themselves. They become a powerful force. That's why a lot of things aren't done by men. Paternity for, fraud, for example. Why is it that men haven't freaking gotten together and gone and, and, and gotten this thing done when every single man is vulnerable to this problem? Paternity fraud should have been a bloody law. Plain and simple. Makes a lot of sense right now, but men don't get together and freaking just come and make laws that protect themselves. Every man just feel like, yeah, okay, well, I'll, I can just handle it by myself, you know. We're not, we're not group oriented. This is where you'll find a ton of attention in female spaces given to things like tone and being nice and you know emoticons with smiling faces and getting along even when there are disagreements. Uh, a lot of their interactions are about comfort level and feelings of acceptance. Men, on the other hand, lack the hardwiring to form a preference for maleness based merely on maleness. And that really just makes sense when you think about men's roles for the last couple million years or so. Um, Roles that involve things like beating the men down the valley to a pulp when they threatened his women and children, or competing against other males within his community for a shot at the mating game. Given those roles, automatically siding with one's own gender over the other is just not going to work. And it's not that men can't manifest any forms of own group preference. It's just that when own group preference manifests in males, it, it just isn't based on maleness alone. There has to be a common purpose, a common set of ideals or principles, a common duty or cause, a common doing, or a common position in the status hierarchy. So men can indeed identify with each other and relate to each other and be team players among other men. Uh, you see it in churches, military units, fraternities, sports teams, even sports fans, political parties, movements, project teams, stuff like that. And while they'll often form hierarchies within those contexts, those realms can be sources of a sense of loyalty and brotherhood among men. And that's what we need more of, gentlemen. We need more of that. Because without that, we're going to continue to lose in this race this gynocentric society has provided for us. Nothing else to it. But, you know, listen, man. It's not all women, of course, like this. I mean... We tend to look at these things as a bleak, bleak world that we live in. Um, and the reason for that is because we see a lot of women like this with huge voices. Listen to this woman. A man should never ask his woman to contribute financially in their relationship. 
Men who ask women for money are insecure in their masculinity. As soon as a man asks a woman to contribute, to split bills, to contribute to rent, to go 50-50, because they're partners, because they're team and it's only fair, this man will grow resentful of his woman. Why? Because he pushed her into his masculine energy. At the end of the day, when he comes home, she's not the feminine, beautiful, playful, charming, seductive, feminine energy woman that she once was, because the woman is pulling her weight and paying, she will become more demanding. She owns half of the place. She is splitting the bills. She is just as much of a partner pulling her weight as the men. So therefore, both are equals. Men and women are both equals. They share the same energy. He will have to ask her for things. He will have to check in with her when it comes to certain things around the household, furniture, bills, things they want to pay for around the house, things they want to do for groceries. Everything is now run by the woman. Because naturally, women are very much focused on the household and family and everything already as it is. Now, if the woman is also paying and contributing for the household, for all the bills, for all the rent and everything, she becomes naturally even more demanding and more in control. So all of a sudden, what happens is the man will resent the woman, even though he was thinking he was being smart, saving money because she's a partner, he actually will grow resentful of her. Because the woman now is in her masculine energy, she's running the entire household, she's stepping into her leadership role, into control and into charge, which results in the man feeling smaller, more insecure, very controlled and emasculated. In other words, he will be running off to the pub with the boys every evening. He will sit on his couch playing PlayStation, crunching on his chips. He's rather on his phone watching TikToks than spending time with her. He doesn't take out for dinner dates anymore because this man is drained. Because he lost his beautiful feminine woman. He created a equal team partner that he pushed into her masculine energy. So it's no one's fault but his. So men, if you're watching this, stop asking women to split the bill because you pay a much higher price than just paying the actual bill. Ladies, if you're watching this, first of all, a man should never ask you to go 50-50, okay? Because clearly he's insecure and clearly he wants to save money or is not really doing well for himself. So you are becoming his doormat and placeholder to keep building him. So one day he can go to his dream girl that he would never even ask for a single penny for. But secondly, also, if you're in a position where your man is asking you for money, you need to pull away and you need to set boundaries and that you cannot contribute because your existence, what you're doing around the household, looking after the children, your feminine energy, everything you are as a woman that you contribute to the household, okay? Your energy, your femininity, you looking after the children, you looking after yourself, you being a man's biggest attribute and investment, almost like a trophy, okay? That that is so much more valuable and so much more worthy of you contributing financially to the household. Gentlemen, that is the biggest pile of BS. This woman first assumes that every man can provide for a household for a wife and two kids. In today's environment, you need to be a top. And when I say top, 10 to 20% man. And when I say that, you're living near a city where the jobs are available. You're not living in the countryside. You're sending kids to school. It's going to be a pretty good school. Women's demands never stop. They never stop. Women fought for this so-called equality, but they only want what benefits them. This woman never mentioned anything about that woman having the ability to work. She talks about, oh, staying home and taking care of the kids. Reality of it is most kids uh, attend preschools. Most kids are out most of the day. The woman's sitting around doing shit all. This is another shaming tactic in order to make men go out and become workhorses. That's all. While women sit on their ass and do nothing. There is no job that is bigger than throwing a few clothes, pieces of clothes in the washing machine and then moving them to the dryer. <laughs> oh, that's hard work. Sweeping a house. Oh, that's so difficult. Yeah. Don't fall for this, gentlemen. Ladies, understand. You either want it one way or the next. You have screwed up the job market. There's a hundred percent more people in the job market because women decided to go out there and get in the job market. Thereby, wages are not going up fast enough, but demand for goods and services have gone up because women want more and more and more. And because so many women are living apart from men, now Consumers have to buy twice the amount of stuff than if it was one, if the woman had just partnered with a man. One car, one fridge, one stove, one bed, everything is one. You got two houses, you got double the amount of real estate, double the amount of taxes, double the amount of cars, double everything. 
corporations are happier when men and women live apart, not together. And all she's doing is helping to contribute to this madness. The reality of it is the average person cannot support a household, it's impossible in today's environment, without you having a top 20, 10% job. No, it's not possible. So get out of your head, lady. Deal with reality. These women, all they want to do is encourage men to just let them sit at home. And then when that woman is ready to divorce his ass, he has to pay her alimony because she was at home. He convinced her to stay at home. And then what? When she ready to leave, he now gets screwed with her for alimony because he had to support her. Now, now, none of that, my friend, makes sense. Don't listen to these idiots. It's amazing how a woman have to be masculine in order to work. It's not weird. She has to be masculine in order to be a functioning adult. Make that shit make sense. Yeah, it doesn't. Anyway, my friend, I don't want to make this one too long. I would love for you guys to listen to the rest of Karen's uh, video. I will put a link in the description here because it goes a lot deeper. It's about another 10, 15 minutes longer, but I don't want to make this video too long. And I want you to also support her channel. Okay, my friends, listen, subscribe if you haven't. Book a session. Let's have a chat. Come over to the membership site and join our group of awesome people. All right. So until next time, my friends, remember, whenever in doubt, always, always ask an older man. See you soon. Cheers.